Excitement for the Nintendo 64 has peaked recently with the announcement of the Nintendo Switch Expansion Pack service, which is adding 9 Nintendo 64 games to its launch, with many more games promised and even some of the second wave of games announced already. I've loved discussing in the comments section the possible additions that Nintendo may bring with many of you. Whilst there's many games which won't make it to the service due to them being, well, quite honestly terrible, there are some absolutely awesome games that I think have very little chance of arriving despite how wanted they would be by fans. So for today's video, here's 9 amazing Nintendo 64 games I'm sure will never arrive on the service. Do you have any other games in mind that you don't think will arrive? Let me know in the comment section down below and as always if you want a full review of any of today's games I'll link you up in the description box. Beetle Adventure Racing or HSV Adventure Racing as it was known in Australia is one of the console's finest racing games. Developed by Paradigm and published by Electronic Arts in 1999, this game arrived out of nowhere to fantastic reviews and it quickly became N64 Gamer's most beloved titles. Combining some epic racing across some incredibly long courses, it was the exploration element which got fans gripped. The game actively encouraged gamers to venture off the beaten path, to seek out hidden routes, and find all of the point boxes to smash through. The more you explored, the more rewarded you became, with unlockable cars and the ability to shave vital seconds off your race times, which was essential for winning the harder championship modes. The track design is honestly the absolute pinnacle on the console, with courses taking you from sleepy old English villages, to huge sprawling snowy mountains, and even a Jurassic Park inspired volcanic island complete with a giant T-Rex and flowing lava through a volcano. The game also packed in fantastic visuals which didn't require the expansion pack, solid multiplayer game modes including a rocket powered beetle battle, and the music was on point, with catchy tunes that even over 20 years later I can still whistle along to from memory. So considering this game is super popular and I know I for one would kill to get this game available, why won't we ever be seeing it? Well in short, the game's release coincided with the relaunch of the Volkswagen Beetle. You know, the model design which was absolutely everywhere in the late 90s and early 2000s. The new Beetle was being marketed at the younger generation, with all promotional materials about having fun, using the car to explore new places and living each day like a brand new adventure. You know, the kind of stuff that you'd expect from some marketing guru to come up with. Given that you can only play as Beatles in Beetle Adventure Racing, I'm certain this game will never show up for a key reason. The model of Beetle in the game has since been completely redesigned, and so I don't think it would make sense for Volkswagen to be interested in promoting their older car when the new design wasn't half as popular. The rights would have also expired long ago, and aside from the sequel which was in development but cancelled, we haven't ever heard a peep in over 20 years of anything more from this title. The biggest game which fans would want to play online with their friends would be Goldeneye. If this ever arrives on the Nintendo Switch expansion pack, I'd probably turn to stone, because the rights to the game, the license and anything Bond related is an absolute mess and a legal minefield that makes this one hard to ever see being released. So why would this game be in so demand? Well it's probably the most nostalgic multiplayer game the console has to offer. From spending countless hours with friends hunched around the TV screen playing 4 player couch co-op death matches, it was just pure relic of its time. These days, for anyone going back to it who hasn't played it in years will likely find it incredibly retro to play when compared to modern FPS multiplayer games, but if you can get past the limitations and allow yourself to be entertained, then the dream of playing this online with three friends would be absolutely fantastic. But it's not just the multiplayer that brings those nostalgic rose-tinted goggles along. The single player game 2 was super fun to play through and at the time of its release was a shining example of how to do a movie licensed video game to perfection. Trying to complete the single player mode and all difficulties and unlocking the secret levels and multiplayer modifications was something I have just as much fun memories of and I wouldn't mind doing it all over again. Sadly, this isn't the only Bond experience that we won't be getting on the service and I'll come to the second one a little bit later on. I'm showing off WWF No Mercy here, which was a year 2000 release developed by the legendary Aki and published by THQ. 
To be fair though, I could show off any of the WWF, WCW or even ECW Nintendo 64 games because we're not going to be getting any of them. Despite the work of Aki being incredibly popular amongst wrestling fans, the license has long expired. The rosters have also changed dramatically, with very few of the roster from the day that the game's release still being active. Oh, and there's also the whole Chris Benoit issue. And if you think the WWE would allow him to remain in the game and see a new release, I think he must be dreaming. One of the best wrestlers of all time, but let's be absolutely clear, he was a bit mental. And the less said about him and what he did, the better. Whilst many fans will argue between No Mercy or Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 being the best wrestling game of all time, you won't ever get to have online battles to find out because I can't see any of the console's wrestling games ever hitting this service. So for now, if you want to relive the Attitude Era, reminisce about when WWE was good, and play what I think is still the best wrestling game ever made, you're going to need to stick in the old fashioned ways of playing it. Ask any football fan who grew up in this era what the best football game was and they'd tell you it was NFL Quarterback Club or Madden. I say that because the majority of my viewers are North American, but if you ask anyone outside of Uncle Sam Land, then they'd probably answer International Superstar Soccer. The game absolutely trashed all over FIFA, and aside from the fantastic FIFA 99, nothing came close just to how damn good the ISS series was on Nintendo 64. I'm showing off ISS 2000 here, which is my personal favourite, but for most people it was probably International Superstar Soccer 64 or 98 that they best remember. The game was just so perfectly balanced, it had much better gameplay than FIFA, and the additional game modes which wouldn't become staples of simulation football games for years to come were all planted right here in this series. I mean ISS 2000 has a deep RPG mode built into it where you take a player from rookie to pro, complete with storylines and getting told off by the matron for not spending enough time training. So considering this is so popular on the console, what's my reasoning for why we'll never see any of the ISS series on the expansion pack service? Firstly, it's because Konami hates gamers, they hate you, they hate your family, they hate their history, they hate their legacy, and they want nothing to do with gaming anymore. Secondly, and jokes aside, it's because although the series never had the licenses that FIFA did, they still had a large number of sponsorships and some licenses in the game which gave it a weird mix of both made up players and real ones. Renegotiating the rights would be time consuming and there's no hell that Konami would go to all of the effort to modify the game to remove everything that was licensed to re-release the game that they don't hold the rights to. So if you're dreaming of playing ISS again with friends, you best get your phones out and send out invites for a gaming night because you definitely won't be doing it on the Nintendo Switch service. Despite being rare's forgotten Nintendo 64 game, because I still get people messaging me now saying they didn't even know Rare made another kart racer on the console after Diddy Kong Racing. Mickey Speedway USA is actually a fantastic game. It's a solid kart racer that I wish many more people would, and perhaps could, still pick up and play. Landing on store shelves in the year 2000, the game was handled mostly by newcomers to the company and so the credit role of the game doesn't include many of the big names that you associate with Rare for that time. On its release it actually reviewed fairly well, and although not hitting the same highs as DKR or Mario Kart 64, it does have a bit of an underground following even to this day. The focus is more on the racing though, though the game does have items and weapons to play a part of the actual combat. You have a large number of courses, secret characters to unlock, and the game runs like butter even without using the expansion pack. Being able to race across real US locations was awesome, and the track design perfectly took these stereotypical elements from each location and crafted it into an enjoyable and sometimes challenging design. I never got too into the multiplayer aspect for this one as I felt the single player mode was its strongest element and so the time trial mode is an area which I think you'd enjoy if, like me, you're quite partial to the odd session of shaving seconds off your lap times. This one's a simple one. The game was developed by Rare, published by Nintendo, but all under license from Disney Interactive. Given how Disney are now super protective of their IPs, and they may make moves into gaming as part of the Disney Plus subscription service, I can't see them allowing this to see the light of day again. Given we did get the fairly recent bundle with Aladdin and Lion King and so on, there may be a faint possibility of this one showing up, but I'd say I'm 99.9% .9 sure we won't be seeing Mickey speeding onto the Switch anytime soon. 
NBA Showtime NBA on NBC is a brilliant arcade basketball game which I've sunk as many hours into as I have sunk three pointers with Reggie Miller. Fans of the NBA Jam series of games will feel instantly at home here, with its over the top, large and live presentation and the ability for anyone to pick up the game and start playing no matter how bad or good they are at games in general. It's the kind of game you could give a controller to your mother and she'd be smashing alley-oops with you in no time. As a pure arcade experience, this is a game which I think would be awesome for the Nintendo Switch expansion pack service as it's lined up for four player online play. Whilst the graphics by today's standards are anything but stellar, even for the time of its release, nobody cared. And to be honest, it's because when you're playing the gameplay, it's so fluid and fun, you can overlook the obvious flaws in its sound and visuals because you're just going to get a rush of excitement whenever you're playing it. Of all the games on the list here, this one's perhaps the best chance of ever making it, as slim as that may be. The rosters, licenses, and even some of the teams are no longer around. And if it wasn't for Arcade 1UP getting a legit release of the NBA Jam Arcade machine recently, I would have said that the chance of this showing up would be slim to none. But for now, we can hope, however doubtful it may be. Voice work by creator Stan Lee, great level design, gorgeous visuals and a storyline straight from the comic books made Spider-Man one of the most beloved N64 action games. Released in the year 2000, this N64 classic takes action platforming into the third dimension with some creative moves which come as no surprise considering it uses the Tony Hawk Pro Skater engine. Developed by Edge of Reality on Nintendo 64 and published by Activision, this one's likely to no-show on the console due to the Spider-Man rights no longer being available to them. With the truly stunning Spider-Man games that have been released since, I doubt that for one of the most hottest IP properties on the market, it's currently a legal mess and so I don't think it would be available for the sort of money that would make sense to pay to get this on the service. While the many fans of this game will argue if the best version was on PS1, N64, Dreamcast or PC, one thing's for sure that you won't be able to add this Switch expansion pack version to that debate. For everyone else though, I strongly suggest that you seek out playing this game any way you can, because it's so fun to play, and just hearing Stan Lee's passionate voice work in the game is a great tribute to the man himself. With the Toy Story movies now wrapped up and finished with, looking back at my personal favourite, Toy Story 2, is something I'll always find time to do. Whilst the Nintendo 64 game wasn't as polished as other 3D platformers from Nintendo and Rare, it packed in a ton of personality, and it was a treat to play for anyone who was a fan of the movies. Surprisingly, the game was re-released in 2012 on the PlayStation 3, PSP, and a year later on the Vita in the download store, and it does seem to pop up every now and again for download once more. I have no idea why it seems to randomly become available again every so often as part of the PS1 classics they promote, but it clearly has something to do with the licensing of the rights. Given that when Nintendo add games to their subscription models, they aren't taken down, and I just can't see Nintendo adding this game unless they could secure it for the entire lifespan of the service. I'm sure many would love to get a nostalgia kick playing this one once more, and it still holds up even to this day if you can overlook its rough edges and less than accurate controls. But combining one of the best animated movies of all time with a video game is a sure way to fire up that nostalgia juice and get it flowing. And wrapping things up here is Twine. The World Is Not Enough saw the Bond license leave Rare and end up in the hands of Electronic Arts to publish this game which was developed by Eurocom on the N64. Once fans got over the fact it wasn't Rare who'd made this game, the game itself is actually really enjoyable to play. Sure, it wasn't as groundbreaking as Goldeneye when it was released, but what you have here is a solid first-person shooter with great visuals, a story which closely follows the movie, and a decent multiplayer mode thrown in. I love the arsenal in the game which has some of my favourite weapons, and the gadgets were used in key locations to make it really feel like a Bond game rather than a generic first-person shooter. The voice work by the movie's cast added authenticity, and the cutscenes helped push the story along at a good pace. Sadly though, like Goldeneye, we won't ever get to see what the game is like on Switch because of the whole rights issue. The biggest problem with Bond is just how many elements of the license are owned by many different companies, organisations and individuals that makes it so damn hard to get clearance for this. 
As much as I'd love to be able to go back in time and play through both Piers Brosnan and Bond games on Nintendo 64, the only way I'll be doing that is on my OG console these days. And so there you have it, that's my roundup of games which I don't think will ever show up on the Nintendo Switch expansion pack service. But it's over to you. What games do you think will be no-shows on the service and which one are you most disappointed in? As always, sound off in the comment section down below and until next time.